Hey, listen, what's essential to a quality pour over? Find out here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saugatuck and welcome to our home and kitchen. Hey, listen, today we're talking about the essential equipment you need for a pour over. Now, let me talk first about different pour over methods that you can use. And then we're going to get to that essential equipment that's necessary to do a quality pour over. So if you've been following us, of course, you know that uh, Michelle and I, uh, we use the Chemex almost every day. And that Chemex is about 50 bucks. We use it with a metal filter, an able cone filter, and that's about another 39. It's kind of pricey, but what I can tell you is both these items will last you a lifetime. The other method uh, that we use is the Hario V60. And this is a little bit more complete package for $32. Okay, comes with the brew basket, and of course, you still need filters. Uh, 40 filters cost you six bucks. That starts making that metal filter almost sound good. I know that. Um, I use this on a pretty regular basis to quick cup coffee. It has a real wide uh, open bottom area that allows water to flow through easily. And just the coffee is the restricting factor, the, the grind of the coffee. And so this is sort of my workshop pour over method. The exact same thing is this. This is also a V60. It's just not a decanter system. It doesn't come as a full package. And frankly, I use this with a ball jar. Now this is only $9. Okay. Now I use the ball jar method with a bunch of Hario V60s because sometimes I may be testing a grind in a coffee and I'll set this one at one grind and that one at the other and I'll cup them later and again that's a little bit more of lab business there and finally if I'm looking for an afternoon cup of coffee I might use the Melita and I might just use a Melita one cup pour over wise uh, it does not have that wide open hole that the Hario does. It has one restricted hole in the bottom. And so in some ways, um, you know, a pour over is a percolation method, but because the water flow is restricted here with the Melita, it's sort of a, a percolator slash infusion method, right? But good for just a cup of coffee. And this costs about the same as this uh, Hario V60 here. All right. Those are a bunch of different methods you can use. There are others out there. I'm sure there's a world of discovery ahead of you, uh, but there's some essential equipment that is needed. And there's really three pieces. And it's all about controlling the variables of the pour. An essential piece of equipment is a scale. And uh, this scale setup needs both um, a weight component, grams, and a timer and a timer is important because when we do a pour over we'll do something like a bloom in 30 to 45 seconds and we're trying to measure the flow rate on a regular basis with the grind of the coffee okay and so we're interested in if we've got the flow rate right grams because we often have to weigh coffee and we like that uh, 30 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water ratio and all along the way we have to measure those grams and so a quality scale is important what's a quality scale a quality scale is one that's accurate to 0.1 okay the other thing we need is a quality kettle and i'm just going to have you come in on this one here real quick this is an electric kettle not a stove kettle and you can set uh, the temperature right now i have it set at 207 i could take that down to let's say 197 if I was doing a darker roast and it's sort of a set it and forget it kind of thing now the important thing about a kettle though is this gooseneck shape for a pour over because it's kind of tricky to get over whoops spilled a little bit of water there 
Uh, and this aperture is really important too. This controls the flow rate, okay? Now this is a little pricey. Uh, this runs about 150. What brand is it? Oh, this is a Fellows Stag. And that, this, this is my go-to. Now you can get a knockoff for about 80, and you can get a stovetop version that does have a thermometer on the top for about 40, right? So if you're looking to just get started and you don't want to go with the Cadillac version, there are some other choices out there for you. And you didn't catch it, but I forgot to say how much this was. This is about $26, okay? <laughs> uh, so, but dialing in your temperature is another one of those variables you like to control, right? Here we like to control weight and time. Here we like to control temperature. You know, generally coffee is extracted between 195 and 207, and there's choices in there to make on a regular basis. All right. Here we have two quality grinders. They're both the brand Barazza. Uh, this is my, my go-to and my workhorse. Uh, this is a Barazza Encore. It's a conical grinder. It's really got some um, uh, uh, good settings on it. Like you can hear them, the tactile tactileness of it is really good. Uh, and you can get close to an espresso, not for a true espresso machine, but maybe for a manual machine and so on, uh, all the way up to uh, the courses that you want. But the nice thing is it's clearly marked. And so I generally start at an eight with a pour over, uh, but with these notches, I can really dial it in in a, in a good way. Now, when I say a quality grinder, one of the things that I'm talking about is the consistency of the grind, right? So uh, these conical uh, burr grinders grind the coffee evenly. So there's not small pieces and big pieces leading to over extraction and under extraction at the same time. Very even chopper of coffee. Uh, the other thing is it won't heat up the coffee while it's grinding it, okay? That's, that's what's in a quality grinder. Uh, we also use the Vario W. Now, did I mention the price of this one? No, no. this is about 139. This is a really big leap because this is $550, okay? But it does a bunch of things for you. First of all, the hopper here will actually weigh the coffee as it comes out. So there's presets on here. You can see one, 60 grams, two, 30 grams, three, 15 grams. So if I'm doing 250 mils, I'm here if I'm doing a thousand mils, I'm here. Now you can also see there's these really fine adjustments and once you get it there, here I'm at an eight, you can take it down even finer adjustments here. Okay, so this is really kind of a nerdy version. Now the conical burr grinder, really good. This is a flat burr grinder, even better, even more consistent in the grind. Okay, so if you want a quality pour over, you need a good timer, a good kettle, and a good grinder. And all that should run at a starter range, oh, at about 240, if you go with the knockoff brand here, okay? But 240 is about what a, a quality automatic drip machine costs too, right? We've done a show on the Mocha Master by Technovorm that's about $250. Now that thing makes a quality, great cup of coffee. And having these pieces of equipment or ones like them will make you a quality cup of coffee too. All right, that's about all the time that we have. Now, one reason that you might wanna do pour overs is like us, we're always on a coffee adventure, trying different coffees, trying to get the best we can out of those coffees. The reason we do that is because we're on a mission. And we're on a mission with Big B Coffee to get us to 50% farm direct. And by farm direct, what we mean is we're buying directly from farmers, eliminating brokers, getting that extra money to the farmers, and making sure then in exchange that those farmers are treating people right, that they're treating the planet right, and has some strong local social mission. And that's what we're up to here in One Big Island Space. All right, well, maybe I didn't answer a question you had, or maybe you even disagree with something I said, or maybe you appreciate everything I told you. Either way, leave me a note down below. And 
One last note, when you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.